Welcome. My name is Kathy Kelly, Executive Director of Family Caregiver Alliance and the National Center on Caregiving. I'd like to welcome you today to our webinar, New Ways to Care, How Families Caregivers Can Use Technologies in the Home. We really are beginning the conversation about how these new and emerging technologies can make life easier for caregivers. There is a ex virtual explosion of interest and innovations in the technology arena, and we thought it best to be able to try to, to start begin the conversation to translate the findings and products that are out there on the market. And we decided to do two webinars, the first one today, New Ways to Care, How Family Caregivers Can Use Technologies at Home, as a practical overview about how technology can help you care for frail, ill, or ill loved one at home. The focus today is making your home safer and more efficient, but we also wanted to use the first webinar as a way to frame the issues and the types of products across a variety of categories to see what's currently available and also what's in the pipeline for development. Next week, next Wednesday, January 21st, we'll be focusing on guide to tech services and products making the best match for your family's needs. In this webinar, we'll be talking about the practical considerations for how do you find and evaluate the new digital products that are available and also offer useful tips and checklists to help in decision making. In this webinar, we'll be taking a sort of a nuts and bolts approach to how you might look at home sensor technologies in particular and make them work uh, as best for the needs of both the family and also for the care recipient. I'd also like to add that both webinars should be available soon as an archive on caregiver.org. Underwriting for these consumer education webinars and materials is provided by Julia Co. and we ap most appreciate the sponsorship of these programs. If you're not familiar with Family Caregiver Alliance, we have been in operation for over three de decades, um, offering a public voice for family caregivers, but also um, providing the direct services to families here in the San Francisco Bay Area and taking calls from across the country, providing educational programs such as the one we're offering today, research into best practices in serving family caregivers and supporting their, uh, their efforts in the home, as well as policy research and advocacy to ensure that policies and services are in place to support family caregivers. We do this through the National Center on Caregiving to advance high quality and cost effective programs and policies for caregivers across the states. And I might point out that our Family Care Navigator located on caregiver.org uh, provides a way for families to re locate resources in their own communities. If you're here in the San Francisco Bay Area, you can call the Bay Area Caregiver Resource Center. I'd like to introduce our speakers today in order um, of their presentations, but before they do that, I would like to make note that on our website, uh, under our uh, calendar notice and later on our archive section, there are a number of publications that go along with the presentations today. And I'd like to point out that there are two presentations in particular authored by um, our current speakers. One is the new era of connected aging, a framework for understanding technologies that support older adults aging in place. This is uh, a work of the Center for Technology and Aging. Uh, it's a white paper, and it talks, uh, it follows along uh, uh, the lines of uh, Dr. Lindeman's presentation today. So I think you might find it helpful as backup information, as well as catalyzing technology to support family caregiving, a publication under the National Alliance for Caregiving as a research paper, but conducted by Rajiv Mehta and others uh, as a roundtable uh, presentation, roundtable discussion that was held about a year ago. 
So I'd like to first introduce Dr. David Lindemann. He's the Director of Healthcare at the University of California Center for Information Technology Research in the Interests of Society, CITRUS, and also the Director of the Center for Technology and Aging. David has worked in the field of aging and long-term care for over 30 years as a healthcare services researcher and administrator, focusing on healthcare technology, chronic disease, and healthy aging. He has conducted research on a variety of topics that include long-term care services and policy, aging and brain health and dementia, community-based residential services, long-term care workforce, and family caregiving. I might add that Citrix is a healthcare program that's a multidisciplinary research collaborative at UC Berkeley, UC Davis, UC Merced, and UC Santa Cruz. His current research and program focuses on the incubation, startup, and scaling of transformative technology-enabled interventions that tackle critical healthcare challenges in improving access and quality of care while reducing costs. These technology-enabled solutions cover continuum healthcare issues and aging issues, ranging from wellness to complex chronic conditions. Following David, Rajiv Mehta, principal of Bagheera Consulting, is a technology executive with extensive experience in commercializing innovation, leading products from conception to market success, and an expert on consumer health, family caregiving, and emerging health technologies. Recent, recently, he led an expert roundtable that published Catalyzing, the Techno Catalyzing Technology to Support Family Caregiving Report. He has also held executive positions and consulting roles in both startups and large corporations, including Apple and Adobe after starting his career at NASA. Rajiv is also a board member of Family Caregiver Alliance, and he's a co-organizer of and advisor to Quantified Self and a founder of Unfrazzled. He is a graduate of Princeton, Stanford, and Columbia. With that, I'd like to turn over the microphone to David Lindemann. Thank you, Kathy, and good morning, afternoon, depending on where you are. We're delighted to be speaking with you today, and I'm thrilled to have an opportunity to share some information that we've been collecting and working with Family Caregiver Alliance and identifying new ways that we can use the not only uh, innovative technologies that are now coming ever more uh, frequently to make become available to us, but also tried and true technologies, basic ways that we can use low tech and high tech to help family caregivers and their loved ones really can't deal with issues uh, that they have uh, challenges with on a day-to-day -day basis. Today, I'm going to take us through a number of areas, but I'd like to share with you that, first and foremost, we're at a very exciting time. This is what we've begun to call a new era of connected aging, uh, and it goes beyond aging, as we all know, into independence, into uh, basically areas for all individuals who may have functional impairments and the families who support those individuals. So what we are seeing is a fantastic array of new programs, sometimes very challenging or possibly even overwhelming, but also w uh, new opportunities that will become ever more easy to use, ever more accessible, ever more affordable. And so today I'd like to take us through a few of these areas so that you can not only understand what we have uh, available to us, but also a few inklings of what is coming in the very immediate future that will make our all of our lives that much easier. So today, during this program, I'm going to cover a number of issues. First, I'd like to just go back to a number of the ways we see that technology can be useful to family caregivers. Uh, give a, a broad overview of in that specific area and then talk about broader trends. Kathy has challenged us to say, where are we seeing changes? Where are we seeing new ways that technology can be used? And I think it's important to get a, a broad understanding of some of these larger changes. From there, we're going to move into some of the specifics, though. Look at the way it helps both individuals with technologies that one can wear, to technologies that can be used in the environment, to those that family caregivers can use to 
get information and help us with our day to day needs. I will also just address a few of the ideas around selecting technologies, but you will be hearing more about that next week. And finally, just uh, again a taste of what we're seeing coming down the pike that you may be thinking about or can consider uh, in terms of what will be available in the very uh, immediate future. So first, in terms of how technologies can be used to deal with a number of the issues that are challenging us as family caregivers, as professionals working in the field, and that we need to have policymakers understand in terms of how technology can make a huge difference in this space. I'd like to just give you a list of nine specific areas where we're seeing technology becoming very accessible and very usable. This is not exhaustive by any means, but it gives you an idea, again, of the many ways we should consider being able to use technology to advance and help the, thus in our daily lives as well as planning for the future. First and foremost, technology is making major opportunities to help family caregivers coordinate care and services. Whether that's local and doing it with family member at home or reaching across the, the continent. We're being able to use the newest versions of technology solutions, whether it's uh, mobile or information to be able to connect people and rapidly and create new opportunities to bring uh, services uh, to us very quickly. Uh, particularly in this area, many of the elements that are available now, whether it's through smartphones or mobile devices or uh, uh, web devices, just calendar systems are becoming much more uh, accessible through technology. Of course, a key issue for all of us is the safety of our loved ones. And technologies are uh, changing the game in terms of how we can both monitor individuals, track people, make sure that people are safe at any given time, and do it in ways that are uh, more comfortable for both family caregivers and the uh, individuals themselves who we're now asking to uh, possibly wear a device or be monitored in, their, uh, in a location where they reside. Particularly, we're now seeing many different technology solutions that can ad advance how we take care of our own health as well as the health of our loved ones. Uh, healthcare is going through tremendous changes, both with the information that's provided, but also how information is transmitted between individuals. But technology also allows as family caregivers to do a number of things to help themselves in many ways. Uh, advancing and opening the door to how we can get goods and services, do it uh, from our home, do it when we want it, where we want it. Similarly, allowing us to have new approaches to our taking care of ourselves uh, through our own spiritual needs. Also, social and emotional support. Technology, through some of the social networking and other mechanisms, has opened brand new ways for people to connect, get support, and be able to connect with their family members, professionals, and a whole array of individuals around the country or their community that are dealing with the same issues they are. Also, it helps us take care of ourselves because we can take advantage of new approaches to support exercise, get better, keep our nutrition up, taking care of ourselves as family caregivers. And finally, one of the biggest areas that technology is doing uh, in advancing is giving us opportunities and new ways to uh, learn more about the issues we need to deal with, get information in a timely and efficient way, and really change the way we uh, can now take advantage of uh, far more resources than we've ever been able to in the past. But this all goes in the context of a broader area of what we've been calling connected aging. Technologies are now uh, changing the way we look at it for functional independence, for individuals who are uh, needing care across the lifespan. So not just aging, but given my background, the way we focused on uh, specific services for older adults. 
And we're seeing some fundamental changes. So I'll just take you through a few of these ideas to lay the groundwork before we get into specific technologies. First, we're seeing a new way to control data and information. We're seeing it uh, through some of the, and I'll address some of the jargon that we're seeing more and more often now in terms of how information is maintained in uh, remote uh, areas away from cell phones, away from computers, but being able to be uh, con coordinated uh, in large platforms and being able to be provided to us wherever we are. Similarly, we're seeing major changes in how data are collected, how we can monitor different areas. And so through innovations in sensors, uh, how we can, whether it's through a cell phone or embedded sensors in, in the environment, we're seeing many changes that can help us track areas that will uh, improve the way we can monitor the activity of our loved ones, know where they are, even to monitoring the physiological changes, the healthcare changes for them, much less how they can be connected to service systems. Similarly, we're seeing wonderful advances in mobile health, in mobile solutions, using regular cell phones and smart uh, phones. The ad, uh, ad advance of apps, which are uh, both health, health and social apps, are growing um, uh, exponentially but again, needing to find those that can be very useful for us. And I use the word gaming in a very, but I mean it in a very different way, and that is how we can use information and technology to help people and the love, our loved ones be able to change behaviors. We're seeing many different ways to use technology solutions in this space. But one of the biggest trends that we're seeing, and many of you I'm sure have heard the term big data is how all of these areas are connected and how we're going to be getting more and more information and how that's going to be used and brought to us and we're going to be able to take advantage of data and the way it can be analyzed to help us with our decisions, help us get more information, and help us monitor day-to-day -day activities. Uh, some of the technology or terminology you may be hearing around this are things such as the quantified self or predictive analytics, a lot of jargon, but basically what it all comes down to is that we have more information that's being collected and in a very positive way can be used to our, our own benefit for us to make decisions, for us to get information quickly, and for us to be able to work more effectively with uh, supporting our loved ones. So another framework for which we've done this, and this is how I'll take the next section of, our, of the presentation, is looking at ways technology uh, support us in body, environment, community, and caregiving. So in terms of trends, we're seeing programs that affect us and can help us monitor changes that we wear, the quantified self-concept. Similarly, we'll talk about a number of areas where the environment where we have technologies that connect us or can monitor us and provide information around about our loved one in the space that we're living in, whether it's at home, in a senior living, residential environment, et cetera. Similarly, we have a number of ways technology is helping us connect with others, connect with the community, whether we're looking at ways to uh, reach out for uh, connecting with family members or other individuals or even service providers, it's, we have a whole new way of doing it through technology. And finally, a large number of solutions that are providing an entire array of uh, mechanisms to support those of us who are uh, caring for a person on a day-to-day -day basis. So with that, I'm going to take us through a journey uh, through this connected aging landscape or connected technology landscape. and walk through some of the examples, give you some very specific technologies. It's not an exhaustive review, and I'm also not endorsing specific technologies. What I do want to try and do over the next 15 minutes is to share with you 
the array of different technologies so that you can begin to understand the variety of uh, technologies that are available and that may fit your particular circumstance, if not now, at some time in the near future. So first, we'll look at areas around how we can use technologies that help the individual, that whether it's a, our family member uh, in terms of being able to monitor their devices or even ourselves as family caregivers, how we can capture information and use it uh, that, is, again, is now being able to be directed directly from uh, technologies that we're wearing or uh, are associated with um, our, ourselves as uh, individuals in the day-to-day -day environment. So what you're seeing are a number of new technologies who, that have been available and are available that track different elements, uh, ranging everything from our activity to our sleep to helping us coordinate medication to even tracking our mood. Several of these technologies offer uh, wonderful opportunities that may be far more important for us as caregivers than for our loved ones. And there are items such as Fitbit or Jawbone that help us track information in terms of uh, just our own ability to stay active, monitor our own health, help us deal with the issues of uh, being able to be uh, for ever more uh, healthy in terms of taking care of our individual needs so that we can be better family caregivers. These types of technologies are constantly advancing. They give us some basic information and they allow us to look at this over time, whether it's on a phone, whether it's on the wearable device, or even, as you can see, uh, giving you information on a computer to track it. Similarly, we have uh, a array of new devices that can be worn by individuals in terms of their ability to be uh, worn for whether it's the person who is uh, we are taking care of and we're seeing this in a way that's very appealing now that they're changing from uh, basic pendants to now uh, jewelry and ways that we can make sure that people can track information and be able to wear it uh, and make it very accessible to individuals. Similarly, we're seeing new types of information that can be brought to bear in this space that will help people who are dealing with various chronic diseases, cognitive dis issues, etc. New programs like Music and Memory that can help uh, provide support and information for a person with dementia. Uh, but this is just the tip of the iceberg in terms of types of uh, technologies that can help individuals who are dealing with different chronic issues. Similarly, we're seeing many new uh, approaches that can uh, uh, help in terms of day-to-day -day activities. These are a little more cutting edge, such as ODE, which actually provides a, uh, a, a different ability to sense aromas and help people improve their appetite to uh, activities or, or technologies such as uh, spoons or silverware that can adjust to tremors and actually re uh, support persons with Parkinsonism. So we're seeing a number of new iterations and new types of technologies that will be make it ever more easy to uh, stay at home, be independent, and give people greater control of their own lives. In terms of the home environment, we're also seeing many other changes. And in this case, we start talking about information that helps monitor individuals, whether it's for their own safety or also in terms of being able to identify where a person is. And they range across a, a very large number of types of technologies. Many of these are now becoming very accessible and even available in uh, in stores across the country. We're going to look at types of uh, passive sensors where information is provided while a person walks through an environment. And they cover a f large number of types of support systems that, ra that range from home activity tracking 
to, again, advances in personal emergency response systems, or PERS, all the way to tracking individuals who are in other locations. So several of these examples, um, such as Lively, are very simple pro, uh, devices that are connected and can be placed uh, in a person's home or in a, in, for an individual that uh, allow a person to track what is it, where their loved one is within their uh, uh, specific uh, residence and location. We have uh, other devices such as Canary and Dropcam that provide opportunities to help monitor and connect information for individuals in different spaces. But what is becoming to be very exciting are the new technologies around connecting individuals. This is where we're able to use mobile devices, m different types of in, uh, programs that are now particularly software driven that are allowing us to connect individuals at any time and place. We have specific programs like patients like me that allow people who are addressing or dealing with the same healthcare issues being able to reach out and talk to other individuals, get information about what they're dealing with, uh, and find people who can share their own experiences and give ideas. We have uh, companies like Independa that are connecting individuals and allowing people to connect on multiple levels. Uh, this example shows a tablet, but it's actually now provided on a television screen that allow you to not only coordinate activities and services, but provide information and, and share information with family members and loved ones and service providers. But now I'd like to spend some time talking about an array of uh, technologies that help support family caregivers in a number of very important ways, some fundamental ways to bring both information and help in decision making and dealing with day-to-day -day issues that are very, make, uh, uh, make the information very accessible, very easy to use, and again, open up new opportunities for us. In this regard, we're seeing some advances such as programs, uh, such as linkages, which has been developed uh, in, by Palo Alto Medical Center in California, that actually are starting to connect people in multiple ways at once, where information uh, is connected collected on both an individual's personal needs and interests, but also allows on the same system an ability to connect with resources or services, connect with, uh, their, uh, with other service devices, and actually connect people through micro-communities all at the same time. So from this very broad approach, we have a number of areas where we can also get significant amounts of education and information whether it's broad information such as material that's provided in the Family Caregiver Alliance's website and that of other organizations around the country to targeted information that's available from on disease specific websites to ways that people can connect now in online communities. Uh, as I mentioned, we, there are a number of ways, uh, patients like me and MedHome, that will allow us to look at ways at MedHelp to get this type of information in a very quick, accessible way. Similarly, we have new ways that technology brings us information around resources, particularly assistance in terms of get finding different types of residential support, getting help for, of individuals to come into the home, or even getting information and finding care management solutions. So, programs such as Caring.com that connects people with uh, local senior residential programs and allows one to look at an array of programs and find what is available to bringing people into the home such as care links to again an ability such as care planners to connect us with a number of different care management uh, providers in a region. Similarly, we have new ways to connect people in terms of uh, coordinating communication, not only with providers, but within our own family. So 
There are new software programs and uh, websites that are available to provide this, such as those designed specifically for caregivers. Lots of Helping Hands and CareZone being two examples for you to pursue. But also basic fundamental technologies that are available every day, uh, whether it's calendar services that are offered under a number of different web browsers and sites to programs like Evernote or even new software programs like a Dropbox, which would allow you to share information that could be available with both family members and providers. But one of the things that Rajiv and I want to reinforce today for you is that we do not need to be just looking at some of these advances in uh, high tech or again hardware or software, but basic fundamental low tech solutions which can be just as useful for us, whether it's notebooks and binders or uh, post-its or other types of devices. We consider all of those under the broad array of technology solutions that help with connecting families and help us making decisions. Finally, in this area, I'd like to share a number of technology solutions that help just in the day-to-day -day solutions. And there are a very broad number of those that you can look at. And they include a number of task management solutions that are available both as apps, you can see a very broad list here of those, to different types of assistive access to assistive technologies, particularly, again, looking at ways that we can get those more traditional technologies, simple issues, whether it be canes or wheelchairs, to general purpose information that can be provided not only via cell phones and smartphones, but through uh, many new apps that are becoming ever more accessible to us. So again, while this is a very uh, broad list, it gives you an idea of the different types of solutions that you can turn to, and that with just simple access to Google and the website, and uh, using a computer, one can open the door to many new solutions in this regard. So with that, I think we, it's important to address the issue of how do you de uh, determine from amongst all these different opportunities and new types of technologies, how do you select or use a means of identifying those that are not only useful for you, but also being able to determine which ones are going to be effective, which ones have been tested by others, and which ones will uh, hold up over time in terms of being uh, the right ones for you and your family. So a number of ideas, just throwing a few things for your consideration in, uh, forward in this regard, and that is, most importantly, any of the technologies we were just looking at or sharing, they have to work for you as a family caregiver. They have to be appropriate for your specific setting and make your life, in this case, easier and better, both in terms of making things more efficient as well as protecting uh, uh, your time as opposed to creating greater complexity or making things more uh, challenging. And that's where we have a, a major challenge in terms of trying to assess a technology. Will it really be uh, not only appropriate for us, but will it be make things make our lives easier? Similarly, one has to look at these different technologies because there are more and more that come to bear, whether it's the wearable technologies, whether it's new information um, sites, whether it's uh, technologies that are built in the environment. And that is a key issue is making sure that they work and are comfortable for both you and your family member. Many, many technologies that are evolving have, are still going through different iterations and are, being, are evolving uh, continuously. So it's very important to make sure that whether it's ease of use in terms of a physical technology that you're using or ease of use in terms of software and being able to use it uh, on a phone or a computer that it works for you and is easy to use. One key issue that we're finding a major challenge in technology is that many of the technologies I just shared with you have been developed independently. 
they work uh, alone, but they often haven't been tested or been designed to work in conjunction with other <coughs> technologies. It's very important to look at how they do work together, particularly if you're going to be using a number of technologies together. So again, a key issue as you're reviewing them or making your decision is to consider how they work together or that, again, you don't make things too complex uh, for your own self because these types of technologies can not uh, work so smoothly uh, in conjunction with each other. It's also important to consider that many of the newer technologies often are going through some testing, are evolving, and that it, we sh do not need to necessarily jump to something brand new or automated or phone-based or computer-based, for example, if there is something far more basic or that has t uh, really held up over the test of time. And that it's important to look at that when considering uh, technology and how much you're going to invest in your time and effort and even money uh, to select those that uh, technologies that you think are right for you and your family. And finally, a key issue is looking at the cost of a technology, making sure that they are going to be durable and that they do not need a great deal of extra effort to maintain. One of the key issues we're finding is that many families in moving into these areas may uh, uh, not be aware that in some cases these technologies can uh, be costly over time either because of uh, continuous fees or because of uh, uh, the need to maintain or update them but also that you want to look at the technologies in terms of what is the track record for them and how well do they perform and are they relatively seamless for you and your use once you have them in place. A key issue so that you aren't spending as much time on the technology but can really focus uh, where energy and time should be focused on your loved one. I'd like to close by taking us through just a few ideas for and share with you what is coming in the future. The, one of the things that we do at both the Center for Technology and Aging and Citrus is look down the path and see how we can help contribute to it. And we've identified a dozen areas uh, for your consideration where we see some really interesting changes coming. Everything from the way we can connect electronic medical records and with devices to the way we can use robotics and sensors and the whole array of apps that are coming to bear. One of the things to consider is how these may become beneficial for you and be thinking ahead in terms of what you would envision and also how you can make your own needs uh, uh, clear to individuals. This slide shows a few of the major changes that are coming. Everything from the Apple Watch to wearable sensors to uh, devices that you can wear, even things such as Google Glass that if they're taken to their end degree will have a fantastic ability to support us as family caregivers. Some of the key issues we see in this regard are bringing information to you as a family member so that you can do multiple tasks at once. And even being able to become far more independent as we see the advent of driverless cars and ability for people who have ambulation or mobility issues now becoming more autonomous. So at this point, I would like to share with you that these are just a sample of technologies we see that, again, reinforce that it's important to look at what's of most appropriate for you and your family and that it's important to track or be aware that these new technologies will be changing and becoming ever more available, ever more affordable, and ideally really help you in terms of the very important challenges you have in taking care of your loved one.
Thank you, David, for your, um, for your wonderful overview. We're going to move now to Rajiv uh, for his presentation. And we're Hi just everyone. making a uh, switch here. Kathy, let me know when my slides are showing. Yes. yes. OK. So with uh, this great uh, overview that David has just provided about the kinds of technologies that are available today already and some of the new technologies coming up for the future, I wanted to give you a, sort of a, a quick synopsis of a roundtable that was held in April and this report, Catalyzing Technology to Support Family Caregiving, which resulted from that. Our, our discussion and our goal was to really encourage and to spark new technologies to support family caregiving. And what we had gathered together was about 20 to 25 experts from the world of, of healthcare and government and foundations and researchers, um, as well as experts from the world of technology and design. And just to make it clear, almost um, you know, most of the people who were there happening to be human beings also had current and recent experiences as caregivers in their own personal lives. So what I'm going to do today in the next 10 minutes or so is to just describe one of the key areas of discussion at the meeting and then the group's recommendations for, for the future. So first of all, there was a lot of discussion about what caregiving actually involves. And the point being that if we don't really well understand the problems, it's hardly likely that we're going to develop great solutions. So we discussed what caregiving is about, and then also tried to find simple but powerful graphical ways uh, to show the reality of family caregiving. And one of the most uh, powerful images was really this of an iceberg to make the point that almost all health care is actually delivered by us in our homes. So taking care of ourselves, taking care of our family members, this is where things are actually happening. And yet the focus of most of our conversations is around the tip of the iceberg, the, the health care system. And unfortunately, what's going on under the water, where 90% of the effort is, has been not at all um, as focused on as needs to be. And so this iceberg metaphor of, of the involvement of family caregivers, it turns out to be one of the most powerful images that we came up with. The other focus, uh, another area was just what actually happens in family caregiving? What are all the different activities that we do and when do they occur? And we had this exercise where everybody who participated we really littered a wall with a bunch of post-its on different um, points about family caregiving. And we created these buckets of, you know, on the columns of medical and wellness and movement and home and so forth. And then we put post-its on the wall. And we also had kind of a vertical axis uh, ranging from sort of once in a lifetime to things that happen on an annual basis, all the way down to things that happen every day or even many, many times a day. And as you can see, um, you know, on the right-hand side of the diagram, there was just a lot of post-its on daily emotional tasks. Um, you know, it really stood out when we did this exercise where things are happening and where we need help. What was also very clear when we sort of stepped back from this, uh, this map that we made was that a lot of the things that there is current assistance for are big issues that occur infrequently, um, like finding a nursing home or help with signing up for Medicare. These things are very, very important, and we caregivers are glad that there's assistance to help us with these things. But at the same time, it, we really highlighted how there's just not enough today to help us with making day-to-day -day caregiving easier. And by seeing all these posts on a wall and seeing how heavily they are on the day-to-day -day, uh, really highlighted the importance of trying to find solutions that help with the day-to-day. -day. Another key diagram was this one. Um, too often, especially from the, world, from the viewpoint of healthcare and the medical system, 
they see family caregivers as those that are providing assistance to the patient. But in doing so, we kind of forget that the family caregivers are also living life. And we have great responsibilities in the realm of work, um, as well as all sorts of other social responsibilities, including taking care of other family members and, um, and other things. And so by highlighting in, in blue that family caregivers have many more things going on in life than just caregiving, um, it gets, helps us to see their lives in context. And then finally, another key thing was just we too often speak of caregiving with this kind of stereotype of the caregiver and the care recipient, when in reality often many, many people are involved, uh, some more and some less, but there are many people involved. And the, ch the hassle of coordinating everyone, of keeping everyone in the loop, it's been very, very hard. This coordination of care, even just within family caregivers, turns out to be quite difficult. And um, there's also sort of lots of family dynamics issues that are involved in all of these. So just to summarize this conversation that we had at the round table and these attempts at creating simple to understand diagrams to really depict their sort of richness and complexity and variability of family caregiving, we felt was quite important to the development of good solutions. And in fact, that was key in the recommendations that the group came up with on what can be done to catalyze more technology development. And I'm going to summarize those uh, recommendations for you. So we came up with a, a series of recommendations, seven in total, that were in a sense three legs of a stool to help support uh, successful caregiving technologies. The first one is in the area of framing the issues. So we deeply understand what caregiving is, the circumstances that occurs in, and the needs of us caregivers. And within that, we identify three key things. Mapping the landscape is more and better such diagrams, the graphics that you just saw, to help everyone really understand um, what caregiving entails. Creating a shared language was also a very key discussion. Um, for example, most of us who are caregivers don't necessarily identify with the word caregiver. We think of ourselves as wives and sons, as friends and neighbors. We're doing what we humans do to help each other. And so oftentimes, solutions meant for caregivers have a hard time reaching the audience because we don't share the same language. Another critical thing is the way that current language actually gets in the way of um, cre creative problem solving. For example, too often we family caregivers are referred to in the health system as the informal caregivers to separate us from, if you will, professional caregivers. But this language, informal caregiver, is uh, can be detrimental. It, it sometimes sort of trivializes why family caregivers do, and so we are taken as seriously. And so the need to create better language and to have this widely used is, is critical to great solutions. And then finally, we need to collect just a lot more data about caregiving. Um, if the intent of these technology solutions and services is to reduce the workload of family caregivers to make what we do more effective, then there needs to be ways to measure and assess this workload and effectiveness. Um, because otherwise, how are we going to judge progress? So we need uh, to collect much more data on an ongoing basis about family caregiving. A second major group of recommendations was in the area of creating a fertile environment uh, to enable innovation to thrive, to enable innovators to really um, be able to do their work in an environment that supports them and nurtures them. So for example, out here in Silicon Valley, there are lots of people, both young and old, who want to create technologies, but you know, do they have uh, the support of investors and, and so forth that will help them do their job? And we identified two key points of, of things that need to be done to help this. 
One is, um, you know, to spur a national conversation around family caregiving. Um, organizations like the Family Caregiver Alliance have, of course, been at the forefront of this for a, a long time, but many of, more of us need to jump in to really help um, make this much more of a national conversation so that uh, the issue of helping family caregivers is very high on the national agenda. Uh, just as important is to have to develop clear business cases. So why would um, a business that does a better job supporting its employees who have family caregiving responsibilities, how would the business benefit? If we want healthcare institutions to do more to include and support family caregivers, how does that help their business of caring for patients? We need really clear business cases made so that these institutions find it um, you know, easier to get the support they need to do that. And then finally, uh, we also have two key recommendations in the area of maximizing the value of caregiving technologies to ensure that we family caregivers are actually able to get the full benefits of this. And two things that were highlighted, one is that coaching complements technology in the sense that we can't simply create technologies put it up on the Apple App Store and expect family caregivers to find them and use them well. Having real human approaches that help family caregivers identify solutions that are good for them, that help them um, make use of them, to tailor them to the needs, to learn from them, and to basically to support family technologies, we believe is critical. Not just the technology alone, but human services to go with them. And then the last one, which we labeled inspiring social conversations, was an acknowledgement that talking about family care is not so much uh, no taboo on it, but it, it's simply not done so much. And so each of us are often solving our problems in our own ways, kind of in the, in the private homes, and therefore not learning from each other. And this is in contrast to, say, uh, new parents who end up learning a lot about raising children from each other because conversation about child raising is actually quite common in social uh, settings. So how do we make talking about family caregiving just as prominent in, in the social world so that we can learn from each other? So this um, you know, is a rather quick summary of the discussion and findings and recommendations from this roundtable. Um, but um, hopefully you can read the report and learn more for yourself. Kathy, I'll turn this back to you now. Thank you, Rajiv. I think that's um, a really wonderful summary of some of the challenges that are facing um, folks that are really looking to develop um, products and services, technology products and services to support family caregiving. Uh, and I think the two presentations um, have um, really wonderfully complemented each other in terms of what are some of the challenges internally in terms of technology development, but also to establish its, um, its better use uh, and accessibility by families, and what might be uh, currently on the market and uh, what will be, what, what are we looking at down the road. We have uh, quite a few questions. It's, um, it's actually uh, wonderful to see the questions coming from in from all over. And um, I, so I'm going to uh, ask actually um, either one of you to comment on issues around privacy uh, and the amount of health information that's being asked to be entered on um, these health applications, for example, or some other platforms that uh, may be uh, available. Uh, I think at last count, I saw recently a, uh, a count of um, almost 8,000 um, applications in healthcare, and it's all, it seems like it's growing daily. But I think the issues around privacy uh, is a concern. Would you, either one of you, like to comment about the privacy issues? I'll be happy to jump in first and first acknowledge it is a critical issue. I think that's one that uh, our society in particular is very sensitive to the information that we do have and that we are often asked to make available or need to make available uh, to receive services or to 
uh, basically help inform uh, providers, et cetera, and that many of the technologies that I shared or indicated in the presentation actually uh, do require us to share information, and it's a key issue in terms of what happens to that information, how it is stored, how it is re uh, recovered, et cetera. But I think it's important to share as an example the uh, fact that in other countries, particularly in the European Union, many people do not have some of the same concerns that we do, and that the more than we've experienced that individuals share information that can be used to help with their family caregiving, help their loved ones, people's concerns about that information can be alleviated. However, that's not to say it's still very important to be that all of these types of technologies and the people who develop them need to be responsible for protecting this information. Rajiv, do you have anything to add to that? No, I'd, I'd really support what David was saying. I know that um, I think it's, it's asking too much of us caregivers ourselves to be, you know, overly focused on sort of the privacy implications as well. We're just overwhelmed in doing what needs to be doing, and so we'll use a tool if it's helpful um, at the moment. So I think it's really up to um, sort of the, the governments and other organizations to make sure that our privacy concerns are addressed. Um, and I know there's, you know, a lot of discussion about these things, and hopefully as David was saying, we in the U.S. will get to address the privacy issues as well or better than what's being done abroad. Thank you. We've had a number of questions around the issues of costs. Uh, what are typical costs? And I know this is a very hard question to, um, to answer uh, simply because the costs are so varied depending upon the application that we're talking about. But what might be some considerations to think about when you look at the cost of a product or service and how it might benefit you? Is there some sort of return on investment uh, advice that you can give uh, people when they're considering the cost issues? Uh, Kathy, I think that's a great point that our listeners are raising in that the, the technologies that I was sharing do run the entire gamut of those that are free, a great deal of information that we can gather quickly, particularly education, information uh, services, uh, and even apps to help us with organizing information or sharing social or health information where it may just be a few dollars to access it. But there are many technologies that can very rapidly be expensive, whether it's hardware, where we uh, need to purchase the, the physical devices, or an expensive smartphone, or uh, have something installed in one's home. But even subscriptions or uh, monthly charges for certain uh, services. And I think fundamentally, it really comes down again to one looking at what type of resources one has to and energy has to put in to use it and whether or not it will really save a great deal of effort and allow you to have better interaction and better safety, better support for your family member versus it may be not providing that much and in some cases even detracting from it. So I actually look at it as more of the, uh, since many of these technologies can be low cost, it becomes much more now of a factor of looking at what's going to improve one's lives. But you're right, uh, there you have to consider looking at this, not only the costs of a software or an app or other uh, product for its immediate concern, but as I said, look at the hidden costs or long-term costs. Are there maintenance costs? Are there uh, updates? Are there other aspects of the technology that could be, if not hidden, just be more expensive in the long term? Yeah, I would, just, um, I would add to it in, in this sense that, relatively speaking, the costs of these technologies are 
much less than our other costs involved with caregiving, whether that's healthcare costs or cost of medicine or cost of services, and just the cost of our, our time and energy. So I think the, the costs of these technologies are, are, are one thing to, to consider, but I wouldn't get too worried about um, sort of refining it down to the penny. Uh, for example, most apps are relatively inexpensive, but even the expensive ones are less than buying a notebook. So just I wouldn't get too worried about the cost yet. Thank you. Um, we had a question um, uh, from a participant who really was talking about how caregiving happens in other settings. There are many families who are dealing with lifelong issues with disabled children, for example. And uh, even though we focused on um, these technologies as uh, really looking at um, the elder care market, it seems to me that many of these products might have a crossover and in your experience in going to the many, many conferences that we all seem to attend on this issue, uh, are there forums or technologies that have that crossover effect that you can um, point to? Or if someone is looking for these kinds of technologies for different populations, where might they start to look for them? That's a, a, an excellent point, uh, uh, totally uh, uh, relevant and, and on point. In fact, uh, I will, it gives me an opportunity to reinforce that even though I was speaking, as you indicated, Kathy, from a focus more towards uh, an older adult population and family caregiving, this is a critical to look at it across the entire life continuum, across all populations, across all functional or cognitive challenges that people face. And in fact, the, one of the exciting elements here is that we are learning from each other, whether it's for children, for uh, persons with disabilities, whether it's for uh, older adults. These technologies in the best of worlds work for um, people in many different situations and settings. Some of the work that's being done by the National Institutes of uh, uh, Disability, uh, NIDER, is that we're seeing a number of new technologies that are being developed for persons with disabilities that will work across the age spectrum. Similarly, the, uh, uh, some of the federal efforts now to bring these programs and technologies together, uh, regardless of age, regard regardless of disease or functional issue, uh, we're seeing some wonderful advances. So without a doubt, uh, I would look to the crossover effect and in fact the ideal technologies that we're seeing here will work for many populations, many different issues and some of the best will be uh, comprehensive in nature and, and be looking for that generic approach. Thank you. Uh, this next question is one that I'm going to answer. It was a question about uh, resources like patients like me for caregivers. And I just would like to say that our website, um, through the very, you know, it's, it's been up for a, you know, almost 15 years now, that um, our site is largely uh, designed for caregivers uh, in mind. And uh, we have a lot of practical information, uh, a lot of uh, information that can be viewed as video clips on direct care uh, tasks, um, as well as uh, are the archive uh, webinars like this that are available to families. But we also have a very robust online uh, support group. And in that support group, uh, which is populated from uh, family members across the country, uh, it's really quite robust. Uh, every day there's at least 15 messages and you can always post a question to the group and I will guarantee you that you will get a response the very next day. It's a very active group. Uh, and you get, you get really wonderful support um, from, from families across the country. And they've dealt with every single issue you can possibly come up with, I guarantee it. Uh, I have uh, one uh, final question um, that I'd like to uh, ask, and that is, um, how does one go about finding these kinds of technologies? Is it a, constel a constant Google search, or is there, are there repositories yet? Or you know, how, just how do families really 
find out about this uh, new emerging field. I'll jump in again <laughs> and share that uh, unfortunately we don't have uh, very comprehensive repositories or if you will ways that have curated or aggregated information really looked at many of these technologies reviewed them uh, we're missing something like a Yelp for technologies at this point uh, ideally uh, some of the great work that's been done here at Family Caregiver Alliance and other programs and ideally uh, from governmental bodies will help us start to pull that together but right now as you indicated Kathy one of the best and most effective is just becoming very active in Google via or other search engines being able to uh, constantly review and to turn to other colleagues other family caregivers for their recommendations and and help in finding solutions uh, the great part about this is all of us even those who are dealing with this uh, on a day-to-day -day basis are in a constant learning mode and it's just in very important to uh, find the best sources that work for you and to stay very active in it and again turn to resources like Family Caregiver Alliance but also your uh, close networks who will have many ideas that will will work and they'll be able to refer to for yourself. I'd also like to mint Rajiv. Yeah, I was just going to add that this is one of the, the big um, hopes for the future is that we can get to you know, something like consumer reports for these caregiving technologies. At the moment, um, those who are able to find information quickly are, are the ones who are sort of actively in, involved in some of the, uh, the, the discussion groups and forums that are online. But it is, you know, as they were saying, it, unfortunately today the best is a lot of Google searches. We will get better at that soon. I'd like to add that uh, one of the projects that we're developing here at Family Caregiver Alliance is a way to help families assess their own needs and to point to the various categories of uh, technologies that they may want to look at. In other words, what might be the most appropriate match, uh, in not an individual product, but a group of products. Uh, and with that, I would like to say that next week, um, our guide to tech services and products making the best match for your family needs. Um, we'll be talking uh, in, a, in a more granular detail, more in detail about what those kinds of uh, needs and match to specific kinds of services. And as an example, we're going to focus on home sensor technologies um, with two individuals that have spent the past year reviewing uh, current products on the market and have determined what might be the best, the, the range of characteristics and how these technologies, uh, each of these technologies might be suitable for one set of characteristics uh, and needs of a family uh, and perhaps uh, a different set of needs uh, and uh, uh, desires of the family for home sensor technology. There might be different a different product range. So I invite you to, um, uh, participate next week or listen to the archive uh, webinar when we have it up. Uh, we do plan to get a little bit more detail, but this first session again was to really set the context and uh, the understanding for this emerging field. We're, we're running as fast as we can to keep up um, with the developments. I think we all are. Uh, and so I um, thank you very much for being an attentive audience and um, I hope that you will uh, Join us next week as we uh, delve into the nitty-gritty of uh, product selection. Thank you.